How's it going? Wow, Captain Sean, <laughs> what an entrance you made. Well, anything for the Landmark Society, oh, great. you know it. Welcome, everyone, to Living Landmarks, Episode 4, here at Epworth Hall at the Silver Lake Institute on the beautiful Silver Lake. So, have you ever been up to Epworth Hall? No, I haven't at all, Wayne. I'll tell you what, Sharon is up there waiting for us. She's going to show us around Epworth Hall. I think you're going to love it. Oh, I'm going to love it. Let's Perfect. Go it. Let's go. All right. Oh, hi, good Sharon. To you, good Wayne. to see you. It's always good to see you. You too, Wayne. So, Sean, this is Sharon Pratt. Glad to meet you. Pleasure. Welcome to Silver Lake. Sharon uh, actually owns a cottage here, and she wrote the National Register nomination for Epworth Hall. Another person wrote it for Partial Institute, and that was in 1986. Epworth Hall was not included, so that's why we did that later. Now, how has the National Register really helped with some funding, particularly with maybe some tax credits, right? Yes, cottagers have been able to apply. Oh, and wonderful. And then, then have been awarded, yes. Wonderful. One of the great things about the Institute is most of it is on the National Register of Historic Places, and that allows the homeowners to have access to some homeowners tax credits. And uh, I've used this program. It's really great. I found it easy to get through. Um, any questions I had, the state was very helpful in answering. And uh, it was really nice to be able to get some of that money back. And I really wish people would use uh, the tax credit program more because every time you improve your own property, you're improving the entire neighborhood. And I think that really makes a big, big difference. You know, Sean, it's always great to get out into our region and really feature wonderful properties like Epworth Hall in this episode of Living Landmarks. And by the way, thanks to both of you for agreeing to be in this video. And you know, it's really due to volunteers like Sharon you know, that really is the backbone of the Landmark Society. Our volunteers, our donors, and our members, we really thank them so much for all of their support. Yeah, it, that is so right, so true, Wayne. And I heard that the sponsor of this particular video wants to remain anonymous. Mm, yeah, that's right. Let's just say that he is a very talented individual and dedicated to the mission of the Landmark Society, and we really hope that he truly understands just how much we appreciate his support. Oh, and thank you, friend. Thank you. Now, Wayne, when we were walking up here, you were showing me all the sites and yeah. beautiful homes that were here. Now, I didn't know much about this place at all when I was growing up in Rochester, so sure. can you please just tell me, please, Sharon, just tell me a little bit more about the Silver Lake Institute. So if I can ask you to use your imagination a little bit. 1873, a camp, a Camp Wesley was started here. It was a Methodist revival camp. And so people came and they rented tents and there were food sources, there were um, outhouses, there, there was all the things that people needed. And so they came for these meetings. And I read in the minutes that women were tired of staying in the tents, they wanted cottages. So cottages began to be built. And they measured out the uh, land areas. Everybody got 66 feet deep, 33 feet wide. And that's what we are. And so then time, passed and as more people got their cottages then they didn't really need the food tents anymore but there were hotels for those who didn't want to have a cottage or rent but they came and stayed in hotels so food was served there there was a racetrack down here you had to pay to get in there was a fence all the way around and if you came by horse and wagon you could go to your cottage unload and then you had to take your horse and wagon back up to the top but it was, it was pretty organized. They didn't make a lot of money, and money was always an issue here. So they came a point where uh, actually they went into uh, bankruptcy. But a man named John Studi bought everything. He saved the place, and we have a building now named Studi Hall after he. It was a women's temperance union building. Down at the end of this pathway here, there was a huge worship center. And then in 1872, this was built. 
and they needed a lecture hall, they wanted a space for people to come and learn. People came from everywhere for lectures. So then that building burned down and everything moved here to Epworth Hall. So it was really the center of everything that happened here. Again, they were in need of more money. They weren't making money enough to sustain. This then became the Silver Lake Institute where they did Chautauqua type events and you could come here to learn to be a secretary um, or a lot of other life skills really. So that's when it became the Institute. So it started as Camp Wesley, then Silver Lake Assembly, and now Silver Lake Institute. This is Epworth Hall. It's been in continual use since it was built in 1892. The Methodist youth group called the Epworth League raised the money, $3,500, to build the building. And it was called Epworth Hall because their group was called the Epworth League. So as you can see, a lot of light from the windows, three stories, well actually it's two, then with a balcony on the inside, which I think we will see later on. The building has changed a bit. Some of the um, siding is different, but the essential building, which is 100 feet long, 50 feet wide, is essentially the same as it was when it was built in 1892. The first rendering was a more Turkish looking building and they decided, mm -mm, not that. So we have this really wonderful timber frame building. You know, Sean, one of the reasons why we chose Epworth Hall to feature in this episode of Living Landmarks is not just because it's a beautiful old historic building, but also because it intersects really well with several of our programs at the Landmark Society. So first of all, it was listed on our five to revive list, and it's also a recipient of our Giver Grant Program, not to mention, it really intersects well with some of the work that we've been doing in nearby Perry. And we were just delighted to receive the Five to Revive. The Five to Revive program started as an initiative as part of Landmark Society's 75th anniversary celebration. We really wanted to come up with a program that would bring attention to some of the wonderful historic resources in our area. And this is a, sort of a very positive take on the idea of an endangered list. We look for properties that we think if they get more attention can really be a stimulus to their immediate area. So each year the committee meets and we look at a lot of properties and with great difficulty we narrow it down to five properties for each year and uh, we choose the ones that we think where the listing will give them the most benefit by bringing attention to their project. I'm really happy that Epworth Hall made the list. Uh, it's one of my favorite places and uh, I've spent quite a bit of time here so it's making me feel very proud that it's getting the recognition that I believe it, it needs. Okay, Wayne, you've got to tell me more about this giver grant because I, for one, would like to receive a grant like that or give a grant like that to someone. Yeah, well, actually, the giver grant is G-V-R-R, -R, and it stands for Genesee Valley Rural Revitalization. And you know, it's, a, it's an appropriate acronym because the Landmark Society is really fortunate. We love to be in a position to be able to give funding to our rural communities. And we received $40,000 from this grant for asbestos abatement for our building. Yeah, and you know, it's a really competitive grant. We had nearly 90 applications and only six were selected. Ooh, well, that's quite the honor, Sharon, quite yes, the honor. Is. So the Genesee Valley Rural Revitalization Grant Program, or GIVER for short, was funded um, in the amount of $750,000 to the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation through the National Park Service's Paul Brune Rural Revitalization Grants Program. Um, the Landmark Society is partnering with the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation to administer this um, subgrant program, which really aims to help support our rural communities in the Finger Lakes and Western New York regions with capital projects, rehabilitation, and revitalization of their buildings. This program really looks to help support these, these types of buildings in our rural communities that are often underfunded or overseen when it comes to public funding for rehabilitation type projects. Um, the Landmark Society and the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation are hoping to be able to, again, obtain funds through the Paul Brun program to continue on our Giver Grant subgrant program. 
And these grants are being offered in the amounts of $5,000 to $50,000, which can oversee projects such as this Upworth Hall project, which will be the floor um, repair project and revitalization of the historic wood floor. So we're very excited to see these projects move forward and hopefully have funding from Paul Brunn in the future to keep the program going. So Sharon, what is Epworth Hall exactly used for nowadays? Well, it began as a lecture hall, really good acoust acoustics in here. So music, lectures, meetings, and then as time has gone on, we still have music, we still have meetings, we have square dancing. We have square danced in here, which is kind of fun. Yes, yes. One thing I've observed in the nine years I've been mayor and really the 25 years I've lived in Perry is this amazing synergy between the Silver Lake Institute and the village of Perry. Silver Lake Institute is not in Perry, the village officially, it's just across the line. Um, however, the energy from the community here, the uh, emphasis on arts and cultural events, the interest in the residents in embracing um, more arts and cultural opportunities and quality of life amenities and recreational um, engagement in the village has meant that we see a lot of Lakers in downtown Perry. We have theaters, we have a wine bar and a microbrewer, we have two bookstores, a bakery. We have a variety of these great small businesses that have been popping up over the last five to ten years that really serve uh, both the immediate local audience, the regional audience, but certainly uh, seasonally the Silver Lake Institute residents are amazing supporters. I started a farmer's market 20 years ago and that goes from June till September and uh, that's my guaranteed time when I know I'll see my Silver Lake Institute friends. I think about this a lot and that is the uh, dynamic of the Institute as uh, a leader in supporting the arts and culture and the history there. So the building that we're in played an amazing outsized role regionally in its heyday relative to bringing people together to hear a preacher, then to hear a performance. Uh, the Institute always played that role of bringing people together, creating community through the arts and through cultural events. Um, the village of Perry is chock full now of its own high quality signature seasonal events from our Shakespeare Festival, Shake on the Lake does just down a couple blocks um, at Silver Lake. Uh, the New York State Puppet Festival, we have a chalk art festival, as well as a Silver Lake experience that happens right here, um, and more. Um, Perry's really learned from the Institute the importance of cultural and arts events in creating community. This has been a great tour. Sharon, thanks so much for taking your time today, telling us a little bit more about Silver Lake Institute, and also telling us and showing us beautiful historic Epworth Hall. I have to tell you, this has been really enlightening for me. And Epworth Hall, it is truly a living landmark. <laughs> but I guess, I guess, you know, Silver Lake Institute is too. And you know what I'd like to do, guys? I'd just like to go walking around a little bit more and so you can show me some more of those great landmarks around here. Uh, How about that? I tell you, it's a good idea, and then after that, why don't we all head down to Perry? There's a great brewery, a great wine bar. There's always something fun going on in Perry. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And that's it. Another episode of Living Landmarks. I'd like to thank everyone who appeared in this episode and our generous anonymous sponsor. And of course you. We've got to thank you. We couldn't have this without you. See you next time. Wait for me!